We have huge breaking news from the NHL and the Boston Bruins. Longtime Bruin Patrice Bergeron is calling it a career. Today we're going to look back at his career and discuss how this impacts the Bruins moving forward. Coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have some pretty significant news this morning from the NHL and the Boston Bruins organization. The Bruins just a short time ago released a statement, actually a pretty lengthy letter from Patrice Bergeron officially announcing his retirement after 19 seasons in the NHL. This is uh, the end of a remarkable, incredible career of somebody who I have no doubt will be a first ballot Hall of Famer and likely have at least one trophy named after him down the road. Uh, to take a quick look back at his career and discuss what this means for the Bruins moving forward is the intention of today's video. So essentially, we want to kind of honor the uh, the key moments of Bergeron's career, look at the stats, and like I said, the, the impact on this team. Uh, it's also speculated that longtime Bruin David Krejci who returned last year in a one-year deal after taking a year off to play in Europe, likely will also not return. Uh, this is going to create a major hole in the Bruins lineup as their top two centermen from the last, not only last year, but the bulk of the past number of years will no longer be in the Bruins organization and lineup. This is going to create a ma major depth issue at the position, which is a crucial, critical position to have success in the NHL. Now, will the Bruins still be a good team? Sure, they have lots of great pieces. Uh, I do wonder what this means for GM Don Sweeney and President Cam Neely if we're going to see some you know, potential moves or trades or something to try to solidify the, the depth at the center position. It just seems you know crucial going into the year uh, with you know what they have that it could be a massive step backwards. Of course, they still are not completely done their offseason business. They still have not re-signed goaltender Jeremy Swayman, and they have not re-signed RFA forward Trent Frederick. So they have to likely get that business taken care of first. They do have some uh, potential arbitration hearings coming up for those players if they're not settled ahead of time. And it could be another couple of weeks before that's all signed, sealed, and delivered so they know exactly where everything stands cap-wise, which could be a big impact on uh, what other decisions they make. But for right now, let's look back at Bergeron's career. Of course, he was a 2003 draft pick. That draft class was absolutely stacked. Uh, we'll go down as a, a really solid draft class, one of the greatest ever. Number 45 overall. I think it's fair to say if we were doing a redraft and looking back at how all those careers went, Patrice Bergeron would be significantly higher. It would certainly be near the top of that draft not 45th. Uh, he certainly exceeded his expectations by a lot based on uh, where he was drafted. That we can say with absolute certainty. I mean, Patrice Bergeron, when he was drafted, it was known what he was capable of. And I think for the most part, he lived up to a lot of expectations. But I think if people would have realized just how good he was going to be at the next level, he definitely would have went higher. Of course, yesterday, was Bergeron's birthday, where he turned 38 years of age. Uh, so certainly happy belated birthday to Patrice Bergeron. Not that he's going to absolutely see this. I suspect he won't. But still, uh, you know, obviously a long time reflection. And I'm sure, you know, played a role in making today the, the key date to make the announcement. Uh, like I said, he played 19 seasons, including a season that was, for the most part, lost. There was a scary situation early in Bergeron's career in 2007. I know there was a lot of concern of, you know, is his career over or how long is he going to miss? I mean, he ended up in a situation against the Philadelphia Flyers where he was hammered from behind, face first, into the boards by Flyers defenseman Randy Jones, which resulted in a broken nose and a very serious concussion, which took a long time for him to recover. Uh, there was, like I said, a lot of concern that year. He ended up only playing 10 games that season, and, uh, you know, it was a big Big blow to the Bruins, who at that point, you, get, you know, this is only four years post-draft, so he's one of the game's top younger players at this point in time. And certainly, uh, you know, if he couldn't have made the comeback, the comeback like that would have been catastrophic for them, and it would have been a elite-level career cut short. Fortunately for Bergeron and everybody around him, he did make the recovery in return, and for the most part, really, uh, I'm not going to say he was never injured because he was, but... He was he never really missed too much for like extended, you know, serious amounts of time after that. He was able to stay relatively healthy uh, without missing too much time 
the rest of the way. Of course, there, there were times he missed, but nothing too crazy or serious. Now, uh, after that long term, uh, he ended up playing 1,294 games throughout his illustrious career, putting up 1,040 points along the way. Obviously, that 1,000-point plateau came not too long ago, a big celebration and a big monumentous uh, you know, result for him to hit that, uh, which is something a lot of elite players and longtime veterans aim to hit if they're going to be anywhere as close. Of course, along the way, he also appeared in 170 playoff games, including 128 playoff points. So he was always a big time game player and rose to the occasion when it mattered most. Obviously, uh, lots of great, big, you know, important playoff moments uh, that were. Um, you know, around Bergeron. I remember the, the Game 7 comeback against the Toronto Maple Leafs in the third period, for example, where he's ultimately scored the uh, the game-tying and game-winning goals. I'm sure that's a bad memory for Leaf fans, but at the same time, a very happy memory and one of the biggest memories, I'm sure, when it comes to Bergeron for Bruins fans throughout his illustrious career. As I mentioned, throughout those all those games and all those seasons with Boston, he was recognized six times as a Selkie Trophy winner, including this past year. So he's certainly going out on top as a high level, still playing. Uh, he won the, he's won. he been recognized with the uh, Mark Messier Leadership Award in the past as well, as well as the King Clancy Award back in 12-13. Uh, he's represented his country numerous times um, and has lots of medals to show for it, uh, including the 2005 World Junior Championship, which took place uh, in the United States and where Canada won gold. He also appeared in a couple of world championships for the, uh, the Canadians as well in 2004 and 2006. Uh, in 2010 and 2014, of course, uh, he represented Canada at the Olympics. Of course, 2010 was the uh, historic games in Vancouver where the Canadian team won on Canadian soil with that historic overtime goal from Sidney Crosby. Uh, of course, also appeared in the 2017 World Cup for Canada with him and Brad Marchand uh, playing with Sidney Crosby mostly uh, as a line in that tournament. Of course, he also won with the Bruins a 2011 Stanley Cup over the Vancouver Canucks and also comeback fashion. Uh, this Bruins team has had their fair share of uh, major comebacks. They've also had a few collapses along the way, which is pretty normal in sports. It goes both ways at times, but Bergeron was certainly um, more often than not part of the positive comebacks than it was on the opposite side of things but also just well known as one of the most classiest people you're ever going to meet he's just a humble uh just down to earth kind of guy always takes time for his fans uh obviously grew up in the quebec city area uh played his junior hockey uh in akity bathurst which of course is the northern part of new brunswick uh in the province where i live uh and i believe he still uh, later on became um, a shareholder in the team as well um, you know, just a guy that's so well respected. I mean, I've never been a Bruins fan. Uh, and to be honest, like, you know, especially my younger years, long before I ever had a YouTube channel, the Bruins teams were a team that was easy to cheer against, especially depending on who you cheered for. But I don't care if you're a Habs fan, a Leafs fan, a Sens fan, any of the Canadian teams, especially in that division, in the Atlantic division that's been, uh, you know, rivals of the Bruins for a long time, y you have to give it up as and have respect for this guy. Uh, he was always been, even though I was never a Bruins fan, uh, especially when I was when I was younger, when he was in the earlier parts of his career. But I, he was all he personally was always one of my favorite players. Just so respectable. He played the game the right way, the hard way. Two hundred foot game, both ends of the ice. Did it all all the time. Terrific leader. Even though he was only the captain in the Bruins organization for a short stretch. Uh, obviously, Zdeno Chera was there wearing a C for a long time, or Bergeron wore an A. You know, he was ba basically a captain as well. Him and Chera shared that role, even though he didn't officially have it on his jersey. But just like, he's just one of those guys that everybody likes, everybody respects, and you just can't help it. He, he proved himself time and time again on the ice. And as much as this is understandable for him after a long career, he's got, I believe, uh, you know, a young family, a wife who I'm sure would love to spend more time with him and create all those more family memories he's going to have more time off the ice but selfishly as a hockey fan this is going to be a big loss I mean he's a very entertaining player to watch it's a huge loss for the Boston Bruins as I mentioned because you know yes he's getting up there in years and he's played for a long time but he's still an elite level player even being recognized this past year once again with the Selkie Trophy I would suspect that that Selkie Trophy needs to be renamed the Bergeron Trophy 
sooner than later. That's out of respect for him and how many times he's won and everything he's done for the game, it's only fitting, in my opinion, that they do that. So, like I said, I'd be curious to see how the Boston Bruins move forward. I don't think there's a need for them to rush into naming a new captain, although they might. They do have uh, some players on that team that are certainly capable of uh, you know providing the leadership that he's the void that he's going to leave in that regard. Um, we'll see if they feel the need to replace that you know letter on the jersey right away, or if they're going to take time. A lot of teams nowadays decide to take time. I mean, obviously after Chera uh, moved on, uh, this was an easy transition to Bergeron. I guess it depends on how they feel and what Jim Montgomery feels, how important it is to have that C on someone's jersey, and do they feel they have the absolute right person that they already know is the right leader for that team. Be curious to see. I uh, wouldn't even be shocked at all if they consulted with him in some capacity uh, around who should take over I mean, because they, they have that much utmost respect for him and everything that he's done. But Bergeron, an uh, elite-level career, first ballot Hall of Famer, huge loss for the NHL, but certainly time for him to ride off into the sunset and enjoy his kids and wife and have more family time for sure. I do hope at some point he gets involved with the game of hockey in some capacity because he's just such a smart, um, you know, intuitive player. I just think there's so much more there that he could possibly give, and we'll see if he gets involved another time in another role uh, with, uh, you know, in the future after having a bit of a break. But certainly congratulations to Patrice Bergeron on a remarkable elite-level Hall of Fame career. The game won't be the same without him, but he certainly deserves his opportunity now to move on to the next stage of his life. So that is all I want to say for Bergeron for right now. Let me know your thoughts, your biggest memories on him in the comment section. How do you think the Bruins react? How do they address their suddenly lack of depth, uh, depth at the center position? Um, you know, will we see them make a big trade, or is the Bruins team poised to maybe take a step back? Or you know, obviously Bergeron was a huge part of it. They still have some great pieces there, but what will they be moving forward? That's a big question, and honestly, I think difficult to answer at the moment let me know your thoughts on that in the comments we'll discuss further if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with all the latest news rumors and analysis of all 32 nhl teams thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time